Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to CNU episode 15. Uh, this is not normally a project that's on my channel. In fact, it's on a good friend of mine, Strict Toaster's channel for the most part. Um, it's a City Skylines project that is kind of loosely based around some, uh, some islands that I'm not going to try and pronounce. Um, if you want to know more about this project, definitely go to the links down below to Strict Toaster's channel and check that out, or also the link to the playlist for CNU. Um, but Basically, this is a really cool project. I've been following it for a while. So when Strict Toaster asked me if I wanted to be sort of like a guest on this thing, I was like, of course I do. Uh, so he sent me the save over and he gave me a couple ideas on what I should do. Um, and we settled on an island that's sort of further away from the rest of his build. And uh, the idea is to build a resort here. So in the actual islands that he's basing this kind of build off, uh, there does exist a resort in this location, um, but with that in mind, there were sort of like asset limitations involved and things like that. So he was kind of just like, you know, do your own thing. He, he gave me uh, full creative freedom, and of course I'm going to try and stay within the theme of CNU, that's the goal here. Um, but uh, at the same time, I want to be able to add my own kind of flair to it. I know um, that we, have, we both have very different building styles, and, um, and I think that it would be pretty fun to make my own mark on Sinu. So that's the goal with this project here. You can see already uh, some pretty crazy stuff happening. Um, this is actually a little out of my comfort zone as well. Um, firstly, just with the theme, um, but uh, also some things we decided to do here early on. So uh, you can see right now that I've started this build around a, a little marina that's actually available on the workshop, uh, as well as this, uh, well, what's supposed to be like a residential building. Uh, the problem with this building is it's got a giant parking lot, like a parking garage thing built into the bottom of it. And that doesn't really fit the theme of this build. Like it's just, it's too big. I mean, this whole island isn't even accessible by road. So you have to take the ferry that comes over to um, the main dock in the front. And with that in mind, I mean, the whole island's kind of based a lot more around like walking trails. I'm going to have these like very thin uh, two lane roads that are designed more for like golf carts that was sort of the idea i think actually in the the real location they use golf carts to get around so it kind of made sense to me to have some roads here and there but certainly not a giant parking garage so um I, I, when i was starting this build i was like man i love this building so much like i really want to use this in the build how can i incorporate this without it looking really weird and i thought all right well what if i use prop or actually i think it's a move it that i used um, to sink the thing into the ground so that the lower area isn't visible. And I kind of just did it at first just to see how it would look. And obviously it would look ridiculous. Like the, the ground is like all lowered and everything else around it looks kind of weird. Um, but then I thought, all right, well, I haven't even used Strict Toaster's docks before. Like these are what I'm, I'm using right now. Um, and they're really, really free form. I mean, you can place them anywhere and then you can use the, the um, move it tool to kind of lower and raise them. And with the addition, and I think this has been around for a while now, but um, since I've been playing the game, it hasn't been around. Uh, the, the ability to actually raise and lower pretty much any prop in the game now um, let me play around with this quite a bit more than I was expecting. And I was like, as I continued, you know, adding these concrete docks to kind of cover stuff up and adding some buildings, and I was like, maybe there's a chance that I could actually pull this off. I could just kind of cover up the hole and I could maybe sink the back a little bit so that it looks like it's kind of all intentional. And then I could add buildings on top and maybe this will actually work. So at this point in the build, I was like kind of on the fence about this. Like it was more of a trial kind of thing. And I was half expecting to just delete the whole thing and start over again later on. But um, the more that I got into this build, I was like, man, this is actually working. Like we could totally pull this off. And uh, it definitely presented a whole lot of really weird problems that I had to solve. But... Um, all in all, I think it was a really fun thing to do. I mean, I had a ton of fun doing it, obviously. Um, but beyond that, it actually turned out looking really cool just because of so many buildings clipped together and so many little things all in one tight location. Um, I think it worked out. So uh, anyway, just to kind of give a bit of an overview of what's going to happen today. Uh, originally, I was planning on filling this entire island with a resort. Um, well, that sort of, that idea came when I was looking at the island without anything on it, and I was like, I could totally fill this whole thing out and make an entire resort in one episode. And then once I started putting the roads down, there was sort of this illusion of, uh, of the island being a lot smaller than it really was. Like, once the roads go down and the buildings come in, I was like, oh man, this is a really big island. Like, I mean, this island is probably like 
uh, a fourth in length, maybe a third in length of the main Sinu Island. It's pretty big, um, you know, in, in respect to Sinu. So uh, the actual square footage on this island is gigantic, much bigger than I thought it was. And I quickly realized that there was pretty much no way that I would finish an entire resort in one episode. So I sort of shifted my focus to this main building. The idea was, all right, finish the main building, get the dock sort of finished off and make sure this whole island is completely like workable, usable, and uh, the main part of the resort is polished. So that was the goal here. Um, the actual resort itself is gonna be much larger than just this single kind of main building complex. Uh, I end up using a lot of these little bungalows that sort of expand out in the water and there's going to be like a golf course in the future and all that stuff. But uh, I think what's going to happen for now is, and this is this is me now at the end of building all of this when I think it was maybe close to 10 or 11 hours of, of just recorded footage. And that's just stuff that I recorded. I mean, there was plenty of footage that I either deleted or I didn't even record because it was just me like tweaking stuff. So there was too much footage to do anything more um, beyond this for the first episode. So uh, I decided to just go for that for the first one. And then I think what's going to happen, depending on how this is received, if you guys like this on my channel, if um, Strict Toasters fans are a fan of, uh, of this little kind of collab thing, I might come back for another episode, who knows, um, and finish off the resort. And then if not, Strict Toaster can kind of take over and finish it off. Um, but I was definitely happy with the uh, the base resort design. Like it definitely feels like on its own right, a complete resort. Like the whole thing is a finished project, but uh, there's so much more that can be added, like beaches and, and uh, a golf course, like I said before. So I certainly wanna go in and do something like that if I get a chance to again uh, in the future. Now you can see that I'm using these docks quite a bit. Um, the tricky thing about this is that Sometimes when you're raising and lowering like large props that are inside of buildings um, around foliage, you'll like tweak the foliage and you'll you'll trigger like the random rotation tool for some reason and it makes the all the trees like re-rotate themselves. Um, and then on top of that, all the props need to stay at the right height and you know manipulating terrain anyway around these can mess stuff up. So um, it was a very, very fragile project. And uh, the more things that I put into this project, the more easy it was to just totally mess it up. So um, you might see later on in the project at least that um, manipulating this stuff became harder and harder and I definitely wanted to aim for getting it right the first time because once I've got all those docks placed in there, now the little you know select thing that I'd use to like move them again is like synced inside of a building and it's really hard to get to. So the idea was just to get the core done, get the uh, the basic design of this big complex out of the way everything sort of like on the uh, I guess the the face value looking nice and clean and then we go into starting props and details and stuff which will uh, certainly be happening here pretty soon uh, so I think I just started with obviously you know using a lot of those docks to create like a wooden boardwalk kind of thing around the outside um, lots of fencing around the outside as well so those areas kind of elevated behind the building look a little more like they're supposed to be there and they're not just like giant concrete blocks that'll have nothing on them. They'll definitely have, you know, outdoor seating and and pools and all that stuff, you know, that you'd expect in an area like this. Um, so anyway, I think this, this front area especially did take some work to tweak properly because I really didn't know what I wanted to do, or I guess back area is what I'm trying to say. This, this back area, it is still sunken all the way down and it didn't have any like traces of it being a parking garage on the on the back side so i thought all right maybe we can get away with this and we can kind of have some sort of lower part of the resort down here um, so you'll see later on some tweaking with this to try and decide exactly how much of the back of this building i want to have exposed and how much of it i want to kind of cover up with terrain and docks and stuff um, but you're now seeing the beginnings of the detailing for the back side over here uh, we've got this big pool We've got, um, well, you can see some little statues down there. Um, but with this giant pool that's going to be like right on the edge, kind of like an infinity pool. And then the idea was have this huge pool, have a bunch of like outdoor scenery and stuff to kind of, you know, sit around and enjoy the view from different angles. And then we would have like a lower area underneath the pool where I might do some sort of like, uh, I don't know, like a sporting area, you know, some some tennis courts or something, something to work with down there that you would expect in like a large scale resort like this. Um, but that'll come later on. 
but right now I was just kind of getting used to all of Strict Toaster's assets because I had never used this whole collection before. So everything was just kind of foreign to me. I didn't really know like where stuff was and there was a lot of scrolling. I, I tried to cut out as much of it as I could so you didn't have to just watch me scroll endlessly through his massive collection of stuff. Um, but I also found some really cool things that I had never subscribed to before, like those those giant uh, pergolas that I keep using, like kind of cutting into buildings and also in the front where the dock is. Those were like a ton of fun to play with and I've never had those in my own collection, so I'm gonna have to go and get those at some point. Uh, I also have those little inner tubes that I put down next to the pool. Those are kind of cool. I don't think I have those either. Um, but I did want to get in lots of like sunbathing areas. I think it's kind of a, a common thing in um, locations like this. Also, I love these like outdoor furniture pieces. So I try to use those a lot in different areas to make it seem like the outdoor space was kind of living and, and fun, like a cool place to be around and not just like places where you have to walk to get to other places. You know, like every spot should have something interesting, something fun to do. There's me looking for a white chair that doesn't exist <laughs> but everything should have something fun to do uh at it so that was kind of the goal here i do wish there were a few more like thatched buildings on the workshop like thatched roofing and kind of like tiki hut style buildings even if they're just like really generic because i'd love to be able to put down like some tiki bars and stuff like that but i just couldn't really find the assets for it so that's all right um now coming on to one of my favorite parts of this build this will be the hot tub kind of location. I wanted to have some swimming in certain places and hot tubs and others. Now, uh, this was also one of the greatest challenges that I faced was theming these areas on the inside that are technically pretty far off the ground because you can't just like elevate rocks. That's the one thing you can't elevate is rocks and foliage uh, with the move it tool. So all of these foliage pieces, all of these um, rock pieces had to be sitting on like the ground level and then coming up through the ground. So this was like a, a massive challenge to get all the, the trees and things to kind of line up perfectly with the rock here. Um, that rock is actually a part of the gigantic like vanilla rock cluster. And I just kind of like rotated it properly underneath the, uh, the building. And I kind of cut that part out because it was like a lot of work just to get that thing sitting in the right place. But that's going to be a common theme with this area. Um, because it's going to take a whole lot of prop elevation and you know, lining stuff up with these docks because again, none of this stuff is actually on the ground level. So it's a lot of um, elevation. And, and luckily we have the, I think it's called prop it up or something. Um, I'm not sure, but it's the mod that like lets you place things on top of other assets. And it actually works for most of these assets, like most of these buildings and the giant docks. So by default, the props do place themselves up like on top of these assets. If I didn't have that mod, then this would be almost impossible because you'd have to like place the build. You'd probably have to place them like outside and then elevate them with move it and then move them with move it and then re-elevate them with move it. So at least this one, it gets them like pretty close and they're actually visible when you place them on top. And then you can just use move it to kind of elevate them to the exact right height and, you know, tweak all that stuff from there. But that mod ended up being really really useful later on so yes very useful <laughs> as you can see because all of this stuff would have been a total pain without it uh, now same thing with this area over here i wanted to have some you know some swimming some hot tubs um i only have really one big pool and it's on the back over there but i just didn't really think that any of the in-game pools looked all that good over here so i went with hot tubs for both of these areas which i think is kind of I don't know, I think it kind of fits anyway, because again, it's a very small space, and um, I didn't want to have a giant pool in there anyway. Uh, so some more hot tubs, again, some more rocks that are kind of clipped into the ground. Um, kind of hard to get those to actually come out in any way whatsoever. And, and this was actually probably the hardest area to detail with foliage, because it was like just high enough off the ground that most of the small objects will not, you know, actually come up and, uh, and clip out of the dock but the really big objects are like way too tall. So I had like a very, very, very limited foliage selection to choose from when I was detailing this area, but I think it turned out all right, all things considered. Um, I actually do mess this whole area up a few times because again, like I was saying, when I tweak any of the docks that are clipped underneath these trees, just by moving them, uh, the random tree rotation gets triggered and all the things start rotating like rapidly and uh, the rotation alone just kind of makes all of these little objects that I meticulously placed 
um, rotate just enough that since they're coming, and they're actually like, this is the very top of the object and it's going way down into the ground, um, that top part will like widely vary in its, in its location because it's kind of leaning to one side or the other. So it definitely messed some stuff up and it took, it took a while to kind of tweak that. So I guess um, word of advice to anybody trying something like this, I would definitely recommend getting everything underneath lined up properly docs included before you go in and try and add any details because moving them at all after this just messes everything up and it's really annoying so anyway some more some more little umbrellas some more nice places to sunbathe i really like these little areas though i think that having some nice like hot tub locations and uh just some lively places to be between different buildings is a good idea for a big resort like this now you can see we're getting away from the main resort now. I'm not going to spend a ton of time over here because this area won't actually get finished. Um, this is about the time when I realized how long it would take to do um, anything more than like the main resort area. So I'm just doing some uh, some basic road layouts and getting like an idea for uh, where I want all the rest of the resort to go. Um, and this is the point where I'd laid out all of those uh, little like bungalows that go out into the water, and I. I know that they're sort of a different theme than our main resort, so uh, the biggest thing that I wanted to do with all those extra buildings was to kind of merge the idea of this like thatched roof bungalow area and also the um, a little more modern like resort buildings. So I tried my best to place resort buildings near the bungalows, place the resort buildings even inside the marina a little bit to kind of clip it and get the same textures and stuff. And I think in the end it turned out okay. Um, Obviously, these areas that uh, I'm working on now won't be uh, completely finished, so I'll have to go back and, and touch those up later on in maybe a future episode or something. But now we're getting to another really cool part. Actually, this might be my actual favorite part of this build because uh, another one of those sort of areas that I, uh, I decided to try something that I thought would be pretty cool, um, but is a little unorthodox. So uh, I decided to try and clip one of these restaurants underneath the swimming pool and create like a lower level here underneath uh, the swimming pool and the outdoor section right next to the tennis courts that would be like a restaurant, a uh, little souvenir shop and like a place you could go and hang out with some more, you know, seating and all that stuff. Uh, just something interesting to be next to these tennis courts because I couldn't really think of anything else to do next to the tennis courts that would sort of fit in like a resort setting. Like I felt like there needed to be restaurants and outdoor seating and stuff because that's like the main thing you see at a resort. and uh, there wasn't really a way to do that without actually placing down some commercial buildings. So that's what's happening now. And we're going to tweak a lot of these roads here later on to not only make sure that we have access to these buildings, but also, you know, for the realism aspect, so we can have our golf carts driving down to these areas and, you know, all that stuff. So you'll see a lot of texture manipulation with these roads to uh, sort of make them fit better and make them feel like they're more a part of their environment and less just like you know, random roads everywhere. So that'll come later on along with those golf carts. Once I get this area a little bit more um, ready for that, I guess, because I need to have lots of textures and stuff and uh, make it seem like you could actually park something there, not just like a giant concrete flat spot. So as I worked on this area, I did take a lot of inspiration actually from the actual islands that are, you know, existing in real life. Um, not in the way that you might imagine though, because like I said before, this, this whole resort sort of has taken a shape that is very different than the original islands. In fact, I think if you go to the first episode of Sir Toaster's series on Sinu, I think he talks a little bit about the uh, the inspiration behind it, but if you do get the location and go look at it on Google Maps, uh, you'll notice that it's a lot more like thatched roofs and, uh, and huts and things like that that um, aren't really available in the workshop right now. So uh, I had to, you know, obviously get a little creative with the different buildings and stuff. But um, with that in mind, I did take inspiration from the path layout and the space usage on the island. So um, something that I noticed is that a lot of what they do on that island is they have different little kind of like plazas with different restaurants or maybe like an area for um, athletics and stuff or gyms or even like areas next to beaches that would be like a little plaza and then all of these different um, roads and pathways would kind of wander their way around to that location and all those pathways would be basically just in the middle of this big dense jungle and you'd take these little golf carts to get there obviously so 
Um, in this area, that was sort of the idea at the beginning was, okay, this will be, now obviously this is connected to the main resort, so it's not going to be, you know, far away from anything else, but it does have lots of roads that sort of all meet up at this point, and we're going to have more points like this in the future with different areas as we move on and, and work on those, but uh, that particular area I wanted to have be sort of a focal point because the more that I worked on it, the more that I realized that um, it's definitely got the most, like, vertical, um, I guess, uh, objects being placed down because you've got like the full height of the giant resort and then it comes down to the pool area and then it goes down below that to the restaurant. So of course I want to make sure this area is nice and visible. So this is going to be like the one little plaza that's got a bit more of like a, a break in the foliage. So when we get to the foliage and stuff, you'll see that I'm going to sort of cut that out and make it more visible from all areas. Um, now this area up here uh, that I'm starting work on now, this is going to be not really very, um, expansive, I guess, away from the resort. Uh, you might think that this big plaza would kind of make sense to start moving outwards, but uh, the interesting thing about this particular area is that it's just below sea level. So when I lowered this building, and um, I kind of have to work with that lowered building at this point, I can't really um, do much to get rid of this area unless I just make the entire building surrounded by docks, which I didn't really want to do. Um, so because it's just a little bit below sea level, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to have like a whole lot of area on this relatively narrow island be below sea level because obviously then you get water that could possibly go over, you know, the uh, retaining sand dunes or whatever and make its way into this area, which would be really bad. Um, so, you know, as much as I'd like to have none of this be below sea level, just this little area over here. Um, made me want to make sure that it's very small and then it doesn't expand too far out before going uphill again to uh, the other parts of the resort. So it's a very small area, just big enough for these two little tennis courts and some parking, a nice little plaza behind the uh, resort building. Of course, I want to do the building justice because it's so big and have like a relatively large little plaza with, uh, you know, places we can park the golf carts and, you know, exit from the back of the building and move to the rest of the resort. So that's what this is all about. But once we get to this edge over here, we're going to start moving uphill again towards the uh, the dunes and all that stuff and start expanding into beaches and stuff. So what you're seeing right now is just, you know, the detailing of this area before we get to that point. Um, and I, I tried really hard to find things that I thought would kind of make sense for a little plaza right outside this building. I thought, OK, you know, obviously tennis courts make sense. Maybe have some, um, you know, little pools for water, uh, also some seating and stuff. But um, beyond that, it was kind of hard to find too much to do with that, so I think I just uh, ended up doing a lot of nature because that's what it seems like this resort in real life uh, definitely does, is they take advantage of the location and they have lots of just nature walks and, and not too much like, I don't know, commercial things you'd find in a different type of resort like uh, giant streets full of, you know, big buildings and places to eat and all that stuff. I don't want to have too much of that beyond the main resort, so you'll see that later on as we continue on with this, but... Uh, right now, I wanted to go in and start doing some terraforming because we are coming on to the part where we need to start expanding away from this main building if I want to get any of this done in time. Um, and I think I've done plenty now with the detailing for the uh, the main building itself. So uh, I definitely wanted to make sure that we had sort of a realistic kind of fall off for where the, um, the beaches would go and then where it would sort of turn into like the coral reefs and all that stuff. So that's where all this terraforming comes in. Now, obviously, Strictos didn't really do much with the uh, the terraforming in this area because, uh, you know, he made it for the map, and the map doesn't need terraforming quite yet, just, you know, the basics. So, uh, essentially, it was just like an island that immediately cut off and went all the way down to the base level, um, the bottom lowest part that it can go uh, for the sea. So, I'm kind of coming back and raising things up and then, of course, putting in some of these coral reefs, which, by the way look really good. I never had this asset before, so it was really fun to play around with it a little bit now. Um, and even since I, I kind of took a break from this game for a while, there's been a lot of really cool assets like these these awesome little like clusters of lilies and there's some other different lilies I'm going to use later on that are really cool as well. Um, so that's a really awesome you know little cluster of objects that if used properly, even just those four can make an area like this look really, really good. So that was super exciting to see. Now, moving on to another dock over here. So 
I kind of felt like the main dock where the passengers can kind of arrive, it's actually the only part where uh, anybody can get on or off the island is that little ferry dock there, is uh, we should have like a little bit of a, a turn and a second piece here that maybe be a little more oriented towards people that have their own boats or um, you know, smaller boats that could be even lowered into the, into the water with that little crane there or backed in via the ramp. Uh, so I wanted to have a second dock over here. Now, um, the one thing about these docks is I didn't really have the time that I wanted to completely finish off and, and build out like a full-size marina. So uh, while the docks themselves I think ended up turning out pretty good and I'm pretty happy with you know the details around them and uh, the inland stuff, uh, I didn't have the ability to actually go in and add all the boats and do all of the marina stuff that I wanted to do. Uh, that would be definitely part of the next half of this project. So, you know, marina stuff, extra builds, uh, expansion outwards towards the beaches, all that stuff. That would come in a future build, but you will see at least the beginnings of the marina. And everything here will be functional, obviously, so that's the main goal. Um, and actually, on that topic, I do want to talk a bit about how this island functions in general. So I kind of hinted at uh, the way it works, but... There's only one entrance, right? Just the marina. So you can't get here by road. You can't fly in here or anything. You have to take the ferry to get to this location. Um, but once there are people here, there's because there's no you know outside connections, every single service has to exist on this island. So I did use his water connections. You saw at the beginning of the episode a little while ago. Um, and uh, that also accounts for his sewage a little bit. Um, but what we don't have is trash collection, we don't have police, fire. Um, I actually didn't put down any, any education because I don't think we had to really worry about that too much, but uh, we may need to have some of those in the future. But um, I made sure to hide all those buildings either inside of other buildings, which I kind of think is actually fair in this sort of situation. Like I feel like you wouldn't really have like a police station on this island, but rather you'd have like you know, some security guards that work from within the buildings and, and, you know, their sort of base of operations is located inside of the main resort buildings. So it kind of makes sense to have all that stuff sort of modularly connected to the main resort. So um, all of it's hidden. In fact, I don't think I even show where they are in the uh, the main time lapse. So you won't even see where they go. But rest assured, everything is fully functional. There's no issues with crime or fire or health or any of that stuff. All of those things are placed in the island and um, hidden away nice and tidy so that you can't really tell they're even there, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, but uh, as we continue with this little dock over here and uh, in this area as well, I tried to have a few different buildings that are kind of spaced out from the main building that have their own little, you know, back, I guess, patios that face the ocean and their own views of the water and all that stuff. Um, and the one in particular next to the uh, dock we were working on earlier, that's kind of supposed to be like an area that people could stay if they maybe have boats they want to be launching from this island here. It kind of makes sense to, um, you know, live close to that. Maybe even those would be like considered... I don't know, like a private building that's only accessible if you're like a member of like some sort of, you know, timeshare sort of thing or something. I don't know. I kind of imagine that to be the case for this area over here. Um, uh, but anyway, moving on to some foliage finally. This is, um, in my opinion, the part that really brings this whole build together because without the foliage, it's kind of empty and bare in a lot of places. Um, uh, but we're going to use a lot of decals, lots of rocks, and a whole lot of wild grass for this project. Now, since I, you know, was playing the game last, there certainly weren't as many grass objects as there are now. In fact, there's some really, really good looking foliage objects that I have never used before that I was really, really thrilled to use in this project. Uh, namely, some of the really big, like, terrain conforming grass pieces that I'll get to later on. Um, but there have been some incredible submissions to the workshop, so thank you so much to all of you guys who make really awesome assets for this game, because the foliage in particular has been, like, mind-blowing this past few months, so big shout-out to all you guys out there doing that stuff. Um, but you'll see a lot of grass placement in particular, because I wanted to try and fit Strict Toaster's um, theme. In fact, I'm going to go in later on and actually take little chunks or copy little chunks with the Move It tool, of uh, foliage that he uses and then uh, sort of mimic that because of course you wouldn't really have like one island of a cluster just have like different foliage for some reason like it's gonna all follow the same uh, ecosystem and stuff so I made sure to do that but um, I, I do think there's probably gonna be some more flower variety in this area in particular mostly because it's uh, 
you know, it's a resort and they're going to have, um, we're going to have different people tending the, uh, the wild areas and the, and the nature aspect a little bit more. So there's still some room for some variety to an extent. Um, so you'll see that later on, but at this point, before we start with that, uh, that main foliage, I did want to get the main, uh, pathways laid out. I wanted to get these roads sort of sorted out and the textures all defined. That way we knew where everything was going to go and I could start putting down the, uh, the foliage for this area. So that was a really important step there. And uh, you'll see that we're gonna definitely expand on these different routes later on in the project. But uh, this is just like a, a little starter kind of design. And, um, and you'll notice, like I said before, um, in the areas sort of directly surrounding that, um, that main building right now we're working on right here, they kind of all radiate outwards from that little plaza. And we'll do things kind of like that in different areas of the, uh, the island as we go. But um, that particular design sort of made sense for this area because again, that's like the sunken sort of main building and then it moves out from there towards the beaches. So of course we're going to have as much beach access as humanly possible in this area over here. Take advantage of that um, the beach beachside location. Now I'm using some of these uh, little mud textures here. I tried to do what Strict Toaster did in his main uh, Sinew City, which was to remove the dirt texture and then add this dirt texture on top. But as I was zooming out and looking at it, it just, everything was already dirt. So it kind of made sense to just keep the dirt texture from the dirt road, uh, at least in that particular little area. Now in future areas and areas kind of expanding outwards from this main resort, I might kind of go with his similar theme, but because this road in particular kind of winds its way through existing walkways and all the walkways are going to be dirt, it just kind of made sense to keep the dirt texture for uh, the under under the uh, the decals, I guess. And now I did have some trouble with these roads, of course, because every time that I change the road type, it always deletes all those things, which is kind of annoying. But um, I did want to go with the service painter and make sure that all of our services look nice before we start doing the detailing, because again, I think uh, adding foliage whenever you have unfinished areas is really difficult. You don't want to accidentally cover up areas that you wanted to maybe eventually go and, um, oh man, that part, that was so annoying. I, I just got to stop for a minute and talk about that. I, I, I don't have the advanced bulldozer tool, whatever you call it. Um, I don't have that in my collection, uh, but strict toaster has it and it's right next to the move it tool. And in fact, it kind of looks like the mass select marquee tool for the move it tool. So, I, I keep doing this and in this particular instance, I couldn't control Z it back, but where I click that instead and then I try and mass select something and I'm just mass deleting it instead. So uh, that little area, I had to like rebuild it because I had already done so much building on the island and then I go over there and like marquee select it and accidentally just delete the whole thing. So that was super annoying, just had to get that out. That was frustrating. But anyway, that was what I was talking about though. I took the, I took the move it tool, I mass select some area that was just like, as much variety as I could possibly find in his um, in his foliage, and then I kind of pick from those areas throughout this process of filling areas out with foliage, just to uh, make sure we get kind of a similar spread, a similar ecosystem going on in this area as the main island. Um, so the thing that I love about this foliage that he chose for this this whole project, and I guess I just didn't really have access to this stuff when I was working on rhinestone. Uh, is just how dense these trees can look and how low to the ground those big bushes are. So when you end up kind of combining all these things together, you get like this really, really dense forest that looks like awesome. And even like the lower parts of the trees get covered up by all the bushes and stuff. It's perfect. It's awesome. So I can't wait to do another project in this game that I can use these different foliage pieces now that they're all out. It seems like in the past like a month or two that I've been playing this game, there's just been like massive leaps in, in foliage in particular, which is awesome. So uh, again, huge props to all of you out there making these awesome designs. Now, I did play around with this texture a little bit, this um, this mowed grass texture, and I'm definitely gonna use it in certain areas, um, just kind of like right immediately outside of these um, more maintained, I guess, closer to the main resort buildings. but. Uh, I tried to kind of manipulate it and move it towards the main building, but I just didn't really like how it looked. You know, it seemed like you wouldn't really be mowing those areas. So uh, that's when I just come in with this big wild grass and I really uh, wanted to make that area look very natural and, uh, you know, nature walk-esque. So you'll see a whole lot of wild grass in these areas in particular. Um, and I even used those giant um, relatively low poly uh, terrain conforming grass pieces. And you can see they don't actually move 
with the um, the wind, and it's actually very noticeable in the time lapse because everything else is like wiggling around like crazy. Um, but the cool thing is, if you use those giant texture or those giant you know clips of grass, and then you go in with those little like kind of spurts of uh, of wild grass and and stuff that actually move with the with the wind. You can just kind of place those on the inside and then the whole thing sort of looks like it's moving even though the uh, the bulk of it is actually not being affected by the wind at all. Um, and that's another great thing about those particular assets is because they don't move with the wind and they're relatively low poly, they actually aren't too bad for the, uh, the FPS in the end, which is awesome because they do look fantastic and they do cover a lot of ground. Um, and in this area in particular, I really wanted to make sure, like I said before, that it was like fully covered in like a like a thick meadow of dense grass and little bushes and stuff, um, but not as much the trees. Right, the trees go on the outside of this area, but the trees don't come in on the the sort of interior of this area, and it, it prevents any sort of uh, I guess obstruction of the view. So uh, I think that was a that little bit of restraint there really nailed this area down. Like if I would have just filled this up with trees, the whole area would be kind of blocked. You wouldn't be able to see anything, and it would be kind of boring. But um, this little kind of break in the trees in the middle near the uh, the main resort, I think, really does make this area much nicer. So that's something to, uh, I guess, try to do sometimes that I think I'm, I'm guilty of definitely not doing a lot of my previous builds. And I'll even notice this going back on old parts of rhinestone and realizing that, you know, sometimes I get carried away with the trees and I just start placing them everywhere. And I think having a little bit of constraint in very key locations can really make a huge difference in your project. Uh, and also just little things like this, like throwing in some bright colored uh, flowers in like very select areas, very dense in those little areas and then nowhere else. It really does uh, make that particular area really pop and also it just kind of makes it feel like a more natural occurrence and you know, you don't just have like the same flower plopped all over the place or whatever. Uh, now these areas up here, I was a huge fan of actually. I tried to I tried to make the, uh, the roads look like they were just really immersed in this like natural state. Um, so I do have these little wooden fences, but they kind of break up in different areas and it looks like they're, uh, you know, they've been there for a long time and they've been sort of, you know, rebuilt at some point, but just kind of let go, which I think makes the whole nature walk feel a lot more uh, nature-y and, you know, not so man-made, which I kind of like as well. I have a little pull-off over here. I don't really know exactly why you'd, you'd need a pull-off there, but it, it kind of makes sense to me to have a little dirt pull-off there. Also, it's a nice little view, so I thought it would be a nice place to have one, and it's across from the entry point, so maybe you'd go and park your car there if you didn't go to the beach or something. It kind of makes sense. Um, uh, but I didn't want to have too much of these like little um, fenced-in tree kind of planter things, so I tried not to do it too much, but I thought it looked kind of cool immediately outside of that, uh, that little entry point for our nature walk. And also we're gonna have some little details here and there, you know, some little uh, little trucks, you know, pulled over and, and I found this really cool postcard thing I wanted to put down um, that I thought kind of fit well and also some, you know, fallen trees and little details like that that I thought were just kind of cool to, you know, throw in there. But as I look at the time here, we are pretty much at the end of this episode now. It's been a long episode. I mean, I, I can't believe we just talked for like 40 minutes. For those of you who stuck around for the whole thing, I appreciate it, of course. Uh, thank you to Strict Toaster for allowing me to do this. I really had a ton of fun with this project. I mean, like I, I knew it was gonna be fun working on Senior, but uh, I don't know, something about just the change of pace and trying something new really got me going, like inspiration-wise. And I think that the end result was really awesome. Like it might be one of the better things that I think I've done in this game. So uh, huge thanks to Strict Toaster, of course. And uh, thanks to you guys for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, I'll see you next time. Oh, I won't see you next time, though, because it's Strict Toaster's episode. Well, hopefully you subscribe to my channel. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching.